Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Steven Boss from the Play Color Sports Talk Show. And this week, I am previewing at the Commanders versus the 49ers. So, of course, the Commanders lost Sunday night to the Giants, dropping them to the number seven seed. And they've got a lot to play for this week because the Lions and the Seahawks are both still in contention for that number seven seed. On the other side, you got the 49ers who Thursday night clinched in Seattle the NFC Championship or the uh, NFC West Championship, excuse me, getting a little ahead of myself there. And they still have a lot to play for as well because they are only one game back of the Minnesota Vikings. They could potentially get the number two seed. The lowest they can finish now is the number three seed, but that number two seed would actually guarantee them home playoff games up until at least the NFC Championship game. So that could be huge with a young quarterback. Now, when I look at these two teams, what I see is two teams that are built very similar. Neither one's going to ask a whole lot of their quarterback. They both like to run the football. They both have some really good wide receivers, and they both really depend on their defense to keep them in football games, especially those front fours and getting after the quarterback. With that being said, there are a few advantages that I feel that my 49ers have this week that's going to give them an edge in this game. But before I jump into those, let's talk about maybe a little bit of the concerns that I have. Uh, so number one, Chase Young might actually come back this week for the Commanders. That could be huge for them. Uh, this is a front four that already gets a lot of pressure, forces you get the ball out of your hands quickly and really have to earn your way down the field. And the more opportunities that you give a young quarterback, the more chances there might be for them to make mistakes. And that's what the commanders are hoping for. Now, my expectation is if they're going to try to attack somewhere, it's going to be the right side of our offensive line. The other concern that I have as a 49ers fan this week is it's only Tuesday. I don't know what the status of Traverius Ward is just yet. And without him in the secondary against the receivers they have there in Washington, it is a little bit of a concern. It's not a major concern, but it is a little bit of a concern for me. With that being said, though, let's talk about the positives. So Sunday night, I saw Saquon Barkley average almost five or maybe a little over five yards a carry against this commander's defense. I think that bodes well for Christian McCaffrey. I also saw Daniel Jones have a lot of success getting the ball out of his hands quickly to receivers who are fairly open, uh, and their pass catchers are not anywhere near as good as what we have in San Francisco. So when I look at the two offenses, I think that the 49ers are going to execute that quick pass game a lot better than what the Giants did, although the Giants had a good amount of success with it. Because you're throwing two guys like George Kittle and Brandon Ayuk and Christian McCaffrey, and you can't mention those guys without talking about yards after the catch. And that was one of the things that actually allowed the commanders to stay in that game Sunday night was they were making those tackles on those Giants receivers. I think they're going to struggle to maybe do that a little bit more this week against the 49ers. On the other side of the equation, though, man, that Giants pass rush really gave Taylor Heineke a fit all night long, and I think you're going to see a lot more of that against the 49ers this week. Now, one difference between the 49ers defense and the Giants defense is pro bowlers at every single level. The number one rush defense in the league is going to take that running game away from the commanders. That's what they want to do because that's how they take pressure off their young quarterback. But Taylor Heineke is a guy that we saw on Sunday night struggled against that pass rush. He's going to see a lot of it. They're going to be able to make the one-dimensional by taking away that running game. That's not going to bode well. As if that weren't already enough, since the Kansas City game, the 49ers have not given up more than 17 points to anybody. They've taken a Seattle team that has only scored less than 20 points twice this season. And guess who the two times that they didn't score 20 against? The 49ers. That's right. So they've taken a hot offense there. They slowed down that Miami offense. This Washington offense has only put up 17 points or more six times this season. So you've only done it six times. You're going against a team that hasn't given up more than 17 points in seven games. The math does not work out well if you're a Commanders fan. One final note I'm going to make is this. I saw Sunday night the Giants defense got very physical with the Commanders receivers. And every time they did, they were immediately looking for a referee, looking for a flag. 
I'm going to tell you guys right now, you're going to get hit. It's going to be smash my football. The 49ers play a very physical style on both offense and defense. If you're going to spend the entire game looking for flags from the referees rather than focusing on the game, it's going to be a very, very long night.